Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast, and I am Pastor Goodman, my good friend, Michelle Bauman. She is the director of Why for Life and still makes time to hang out with us, and I'm really, really grateful. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for inviting me. And I always have time for higher things. Are you kidding? We we adore you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> every time we get to talk, it, it's just it's an awesome sort of life perspective, um, and it, it's it's rooted in hope, which is something that uh, world's too short of. Um, and so uh, it, we've we've started to do something uh, instead of sort of just hopping around on on whatever is terrifying on social media now we're we're, we're going into the bible which is a weird thing for us to be doing i guess yeah. oh. uh, we're working our way through genesis uh where do we leave off finding life issues in, in yeah. genesis so we covered genesis one last time so now we're going to cover genesis two which is the natural progression right it makes so sense it does it does so genesis two actually starts off with god resting right what does that have to do with life issues and actually I think it's so wonderful that God does this. And it does. It's it's intimately connected with life issues because we know rest is necessary for life. But is rest necessary for God? No. He doesn't sleep, right? He doesn't tired. need rest. And yet he models that for us, right? He models us, he models for us that Sabbath rest that we're supposed to take, that's necessary for life, that is life affirming. And it's in this Sabbath rest. Uh, that we that we receive God's gifts, um, and and uh, not only like physically, right? He gives us all these gifts and talents to use in service to others, but He also wants to serve us, and so He serves us um, through His modeling uh, that rest, and also through the gifts that He gives us, right? So we have this this physical rest, but it is not a far leap to remember the whole goal of Sabbath rest, and that is uh, found in Christ, right? Our, our true Sabbath rest is found in Christ even today, um, in the promise of the Savior, uh, in, in uh, the fact that we have received the gifts of, of real peace and real rest through our Savior, right? So it's not just physical rest, but spiritual. And of course, we've always connected that day with, with, of rest with a day of worship. Um, or very often we do uh, in the history of Christianity. And so what a what a great life affirming um, message to start chapter two with, right? Let's take time to rest. <laughs> I love it. And and it, it points out too that that rest for us is is not so far gone. Um it, it, it sometimes feels like it is, but like we have a God here who who is never too good for his creation. He's never too good to be a part of the things that he has made. Um and, and so he parks rest right in the middle of creation. It's it's easy for Christians to sort of talk about it as like, you know, I'm gonna die one day and go to heaven, and I guess that's nice but um and i mean i i look forward to the resurrection come lord jesus it's advent let's pay attention to it but also it, it's it's really really wonderful that that god cares enough about my life all life your life that that we can find rest today because Even god today. god marks it yeah that's right and and wants it right uh, and he doesn't just give rest in in chapter two but he also gives vocations which we've talked about before right but vocations are meant to be life affirming for us and for us to be life affirming to others right through those vocations so the very first thing that he does is he gives um adam the the work that he's supposed to do uh, to tend the garden and so he has an occupation um and whether that occupation is gardener or farmer or harvester whatever whatever term you want to give it he gives adam work to do because work also is life affirming, uh, not only for us, but also for the people that we are designed to care for. So even today, that um, that life affirming work brings income into our family, provides food and shelter for our family, um, gives us opportunities to interact with others to share the message of Christ. So in our family, maybe all of our family is Christian, but you know, post fall our vocations, our work are going to interact with others, with other sinful people. In fact, even people who don't know Christ. Um, and it's, it's in our vocations that we work, that we, that we work as if we are working for God, right? And um, the Bible tells us, and, and Martin Luther uh, affirms that, that we should, we should work as if we are working for God, because that is indeed what work is for. It is to provide 
for the people that God has in our lives to provide for, but also as a witness to him, right? Even in secular jobs, we can affirm and uphold life by the way that we carry out our work, that we don't cheat our boss, that we don't gossip, that we do pray uh, before lunch, that we do um, you know, share share the, that message when people ask us for the hope that we have. So that's like the first vocation, but immediately right after that, um, he's also, and I love this as a former English teacher, Adam is also called to be a linguist, mm. right? So he's, he's yeah, asked yeah. To, to name yeah. the animals. And in his naming, he is to continue that order that God creates at creation, right? God has this order at creation that's life affirming. And when we see in the language field, we see this structure, this order um, that that provides for and names life and and upholds, affirms. Um, this is what this creature is. And this creature is good because this creature was created by God, right? So he gives him like two vocations right away. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, he's going to give him another one. But I'll, I'll I like pause here. <laughs> I like that you you even pointed out like you you compared this where where everything is perfect to how we have to to live now in vocations and it's it's something that uh, makes me feel better as a parent because it's it's a thing I do to my kids that they hate uh, but they'll tell me things they have to do and, and I'll remind them that they get to they they don't have to go to school they get to go to school um and they don't like that um but uh, <laughs> it's fun for me uh, mostly because they don't like that because I'm a sinner um vocation though is is not something that we have to do now that sin has entered the world and we're all just sort of like trying. To, to get by until Jesus comes back. But vocation is actually how we were made, that, that even before sin entered the world, we're actually supposed to have things to do. Um, right. it, it's a good way to reflect upon the world because um, one of the, the sins I think that that consumes the most life, um, it, it's one of those old ones. Uh, they, they called it uh, way back when, they called it sloth or, or Acadia. Um, sure. And uh, they used to talk about it as just, it, it's not being lazy. It, it's being hopeless. There, there's a kind of hopelessness that takes over so much where you don't even want to get out of bed. That that depression that that sort of wants to sort of pull you away from the callings that you have, where where you get to live a life. Um, and and that perspective that that it's it's not just sort of um everything's broke down here. So how do we just limp by? But but rather there's actually not just joy and and life, but a, a, something that is life affirming and builds yet more of the same. When right. we when we get, get kind of get to embrace our vocations, when we get to see God placing Adam in this and, and affirming him, um, the the ground that you you tend, it's gonna produce the things that you call that whatever you call it, it's a cow now. Fine, it's a cow. What we're going with a cow? That's the <laughs> word for it. Um, and <laughs> to to sort of see these things, it, it's a call for us who who might sometimes feel a little bit hopeless down here to recognize these things God has promised to do both before and after the fall, and He has not let even sin take this away from us because life matters to him that much. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you did, you know, you connected it with depression and and those sort of things because, uh, you know, sometimes time is, is our enemy, right? Free time, uh, that, that contemplation. Doesn't do good for me. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and I, I know that that's, that's true of a lot of us that, that, that free time, uh, brings up thoughts that maybe we shouldn't be having, right? Or contemplations or sadness from from those reflections. And not that, not that vocations distract us from that reality, but vocations give us, give us purpose. They give us opportunities to serve. And, and God has so made us, so built us that we find much joy in serving others, right? There is much joy that's brought to life when you are, when you are serving someone else, many opportunities. Yeah, I like that. It's um, it, it's true not just with your hands, but with your mind, and those those are connected. Um, I, a friend of mine, uh, Pastor Wolf Mueller, he he was telling me um the difference between worry and imagination that that God actually gave us minds that were capable of imagining, um, and no other creature really gets that. Um, but but sin sort of corrupts it and turns it inward, and there that's when imagination that's supposed to dwell on God's promises uh, turns to worry, and it, it imagines a, a world without God. And, and in the same way, you know, our, our hands when we're left alone. Our, 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 our thoughts, our minds, we, we turn inward and the neighbor yeah. is a, a place to focus this for good. Yeah. That's a, that's a great, that's a great um, image. Yeah. A great, great comparison. That's good. There, there's one more vocation that um, God gives Adam in chapter two, and that is as husband, right? So as Adam is naming 
all of the creatures. And he's seen this beautiful order, order that God gave this uh, male and female so that so that life can continue. And we kind of alluded to that um, last time we met uh, with Genesis one. But but, you know, we we assume that Adam recognizes that there isn't anyone for him. Right. The Bible says, but there was no mate and, and there was no one for Adam. And this is the first time that God says it's not good, that it is not good for man to be alone. Right. And then he makes he makes Eve as this helpmate. And so he gives Adam another vocation, an opportunity to serve, but also to be served. Right. And so um, here we see this really wonderful gift that God gives us, that this life affirming gift of other people. Right. Mm -hmm. That that people are designed to be blessings to us uh, and for us to be blessings to them, uh, to be our to be our helpmate. Now, obviously, Adam and Eve have a very special relationship of husband and wife uh, and their oneness will bring forth life into the world. But but when we talk about, um, you know, what we were made for, we were made for others. We were made for life and we were made for others. Um, and and uh, God so designed us. So um, and so again, you just see God's life affirming work again and again, right? With rest, with work, and then with with those relationships. Um, yeah. It's just it's really really beautiful to see um, God lay that foundation for us because we know it's coming in chapter three. Right. <laughs> right? I love that you. Yeah, I, I love that you started with the family here, but the, then let it carry outward to uh, the, the table of duties in our in our catechism. Does this too? Vocation is is always given in pairs. Um, it, it's never just sort of how you earn your keep, but but it's how you love your very specific neighbor. There, there's husbands and wives, there's parents and children, there's pastors and congregants, there's governments and citizens. It's it's always sort of paired up with people. Um, the only people who sort of get get off the hook a little bit are the widows. Um, and they, they, they get to only receive. Um, that that it, even even if you you feel alone, they're, they're, the whole point of your vocation is that you are not alone. There are people here and they're going to take care of you. They're going to love you. They're going to care for you. When you feel alone recognize that it's 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 an unhealthy place so look to the places where god has promised to work and and it, it's it's also because we know genesis 3 is coming um and maybe an, an important point to to call out to they're specific people um god gives you specific sinners that he promises to work good through and and it's wonderful because i can always imagine a better person who's not so sinful out there but god actually says no that sinner that one that that in in your selfishness you you sometimes lose sight of those are the ones that are given to you those congregants those kids that wife that that government that that ruler that president um it, it, it's a promise of god that that actually carries forward i think because he might just maybe has a he knows it's coming you know he does yeah i mean you, you see also in genesis 2 the tree of life and the tree of good and evil right mm -hmm. god prepares he knows what's coming right and and yes and he gives relationship he gives us people uh to walk through that to help bury to help bear the burden to carry the cross uh of mm -hmm. each other and we already see that that planned for right here so god god is god is so amazing <laughs> <A fan. laughs> <laughs> I just, might I just, just know I, what he's doing. He uh, might. He might. I just, I am always awed by him and, and thankful that he had this, this perfect plan, right? And, uh, and we see him lay it out and we see all these life affirming things he does to prepare for our good. Yeah. And even the tree of knowledge, um, it, it, it sort of seems like the one oversight, but even this is a gift that uh, in our sin, we, we would want to call a curse. But Luther thought the tree of knowledge of good and evil in Genesis 2 was the very first church. He, he thought this wasn't put in the garden as a trap, but as a, a place where Adam and Eve could simply go and recognize there's something bigger than themselves to actually care for them. There is something that is designed to swallow up evil so they'll never have to worry about it. Um, and, and that's going to find fulfillment on the cross. But but even this place where, where we would take something good from God that he calls good and, and try and use it for evil, even that was a part of the plan because he would give us another tree to swallow up evil forever, to contain all of the knowledge of all of the evil in the world that you wouldn't have to worry about it. He sends his son to die on the cross and that's connected to. Right. Which is, it's the next tree of life, right? Yeah. Not only to swallow up that evil, but to, to give life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The same tree that we'll see, see in uh, the manger. <laughs> it's be fun. So. 
All right. We're going to tackle the tough one next time then, I suppose, huh? That's right. Yep. Genesis 3 is coming. <laughs> Let's find life in the fall next time. Thanks for hanging out, Michelle. Uh, real quick, what's what's Why for Life up to? Well, right now we're, we are um, working on stuff for, for Washington, D.C., so big conference coming up in January. If you're not signed up yet, please do. Uh, there's still space available, but there's but we're running out, right? So we've already got more than 300 signed up and we're excited about that. Um, and we're just looking at, after the new year, um, be ready because we are we are unveiling uh, a new way to serve young people. So it's called YA for Life. So we're looking at young adults, 20 and 30 somethings, be prepared, uh, we're coming your way. So I like it. Where can we make sure that we don't miss this update? How do we find yeah, it on social? Yforlife.org. Join uh, follow us on Instagram LFL Y for Life or you can even follow us at LFL YA for Life now. So, yeah. I Look like it, it up. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Michelle. Have a good one. Thanks you too.